So tomorrow we're supposed to go out a uh, little bit green laning, um, soft off-road, nothing challenging. Uh, just a weekend out, just boys. So there's gonna be a lot of drinking, swearing, and smoking, and all that stuff. Just you know, get out there, city, get out there, all the troubles, just for two days, and uh, just relax a little bit. I'm not sure what to do. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna go or not because I've got a lot of work to do. A little bit behind with the payments, uh, so the idea was if all the parts arrive today. Uh, I'm staying over the sun Saturday and Sunday this weekend and get the job done as soon as possible, as much as possible and trying to catch up. Uh, say that, I've been working on stuff for three weeks now and uh, I feel like my head is exploding. It's a bit too much maybe, I uh, don't want to push it again. So I'm in a split decision, going or not going, I don't know, it's, it's a bit, I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, I thought I'd show you the van a little bit. Um, yeah, this is half this van is still have to be finished. And I keep saying this, and I'll be keep saying this for probably months and months before it's actually done. Because this year will really, really be easier. We've got so much work to do, and uh, expedition cars, turbo systems, couple of race cars, uh, and yeah, too much. So. Uh, let me have a look at it. Let me show you. Let me get the camera from here. This is the setup I put it on so we can drive. I can put the camera where we're going or whatever I want to talk about it. Uh, yeah, as you know, this is a Renault traffic. Uh, Four wheel drive we've built uh, on the Nissan Patrol Y61 axles. Locker on the back, uh, locker on the diff, on the center diff. Actually, this transfer case doesn't have any differential, so as soon as you select four wheel drive, is locked, which is what I like, uh, very simple. Uh, Subaru STI seats, they were really comfortable for a bucket seats, and we did travel two or three hours roughly, and you don't get tired, it's they quite comfy. They're full adjustable, so that's right. Uh, this is here my angry other. You see all that stuff has to be finished. I want uh, uh, a big screen for the sat nav over there for the navigator. This is my battery monitoring. You can see on just fixed with the zip tire. Uh, this is my heater metrics because obviously the engine now is so far behind because it's straight six BMW 3 liter turbo diesel M57N. So there's no space for the original metrics or heater. This is my body. This is my shift body. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm supposed to finish this up because this is supposed to actually get it the right length for whatever it should be, but all the way down it works fine. And then it's actually stuck because it's, this pipe goes stuck in this little bit corner and it's fairly solid. So I left it that way saying, Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, it's been months now. I guess I'm just gonna leave it this way. Oh, this is my shifter. This is my transfer box shifter. It uses Jeep uh, NP231 shifter. This is the selector. This is, I think, this is an old Volvo automatic gearbox selector which I have adopted to to shift the transfer case, which is great because usually the Jeeps they have like a solid linkage, and um, obviously it wouldn't work here because the transfer box is behind there. It's so too much work. Um, so a link, uh, a link gearbox, um, it works perfectly for that. So that's what we use. Let me have a. Sh let me show you on the back. What I got. It's not too big. It's actually a small class van, which is exactly what we wanted with my wife. This is the logo. This is exactly what we wanted for my wife, with my wife, because we actually do a lot of off-roading. All the friends we have, they got normal cars, well, um, off-roaders. And uh, I, I just didn't want to be stuck because the car is van is too big and we just go, can't go through. So, plus, we just, me, my missus and, and my small daughter. The older daughter doesn't travel with us anymore, she's 20, so obviously she has her own life now and 
and going with the parents is, by, is a bit embarrassing now you got better stuff to do so it is the fun again as I said it's work in progress this is the first layer of uh, is no this is the second layer the first layer um, but the floor is completely insulated and sound deadening uh, there is a sound deadening on every panel uh, plus the heat barrier and then I had another heat barrier layer to put on the top of everything which is this stuff which is like a bubbles and obviously aluminium foil everywhere to prevent obviously the vapors and all the stuff uh, this is my fuel tank which is still under the bed now it doesn't leak it doesn't smell but obviously it takes all the space that all this stuff yeah all of that stuff supposed to be under the bed um, well, I have to find a time to build the fuel tanks the fuel tanks is gonna be underneath big aluminium tanks and uh, we calculated on the, on 60 70 miles per hour on the motorway up to 80 this van comfortably does 30 35 miles per gallon this is including city and all that stuff so i've based my range calculated on the um, size of the fuel tanks and uh, 30 miles per gallon um, imperial not us they're different we're supposed to we should be able to do at the least 1200 miles on one fill up. Uh, this can be extended to almost 1500 miles, which is, I don't think we're never gonna need it. I mean, seven, eight hundred miles, that's that's plenty, that's that's enough. Um, so, yeah, okay, so blah, blah, blah. these are, you see, the very, very quickly bulged together. And uh, just to keep the shit in, that was months ago, just to take it home and take my missus for a ride, and then it stayed that way for months now. A bit of shape, but. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it sooner later. So I got some lights here. Let's put them on. Uh, lots of stuff over there. Camping stuff. This is my compressor, extinguisher, obviously. Um, emergency kit, binoculars, uh, a shower. This is if you don't know what that is. This is a toilet in the wild. This is a perfect toilet. Um, what else? This is here. Yeah, let me show you. My battery, yeah, is has to be underneath. I just left it there. Battery monitoring, lots of stuff. There's a uh, radio fixer, uh, repair kit for the tires, uh, bat spare batteries, oil, brake oil, um, cans of gas for the cooker. The cooker underneath here. This is actually one of the best ones. Twin cooker. We had expensive one. We spent over 130 pounds with my wife. And when we started camping and it was pretty crap and turn up these ones they are 35 40 quid one of the best i mean everyone uses uses these use they use standard cartridges for the gas and they just they're great we love them we use them so so many times and it's just does the job every time nothing to complain about yeah sometimes the cheapest stuff is actually the best not usually but in this time yes oh and obviously the toilet roll and another toilet roll over there <laughs> Never enough for the toilet when you go to the kids. Daddy, daddy, we have to stop. <laughs> we just left. We just left home. Well, I got to stop already. Now in this bag in the new there are more stuff. We have um, spare uh, high pressure diesel lines just in case something goes wrong with the fuel system. I have a spare fuel pump uh, and jubilee clips and a lot of different electric um, spares. Uh, vacuum lines, silicon vacuum lines, and lighter. This is normal lighter. No. These I just bought it. I'm not sure when I use it. Uh, this is a kit, Rainex obviously for the windows. A kit that you connect your pipes. Um, sorry, you connect this to this water pump and. Uh, wash it uh, you can take the order from uh, any pond really it's not too dirty uh, it's got a small filter I haven't tested yet uh, I don't know idea if it works or not uh, I just bought it just chuck it in the back here on the first occasion I'm gonna use it I'm gonna try to to test it uh, spare tools this is actually a big tool set uh, it's got pretty much everything in there it was fairly cheap uh, electric blanket this is for my wife obviously for the neck when she travels on the back here because obviously my daughter 
goes in the front with me all the time, sleeping bags, rock and roll bed, which I absolutely hate. This thing is absolutely shit. Now sitting on this for 20 minutes is right. Half an hour is already pretty bad. An hour, that's, no, it's not comfortable too. So this is gonna be for sale. It is actually good sleeping on it. So as a bed does the job, I like it because it's nice and flat, not too soft, which is exactly what I want for my shit bag back. Um, but you know this this is have this has to go. It's heavy. It is. It's I just. It's not comfortable to 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 travel with. I was thinking about the back seats from the Mitsubishi Delica or Delica, whatever you want to call it. Um, they have different sizes, different specs, and I was thinking about those because they're really really comfortable when you travel, which is important. Uh, but I have to see when they open how to set up the the bed. Obviously the roof we're gonna. Uh, chop the top of there that is going to be entrance and uh, we're going to install a uh, pop-up roof on the top uh, which these and Renault traffic and the Vivaros they have they the very square body uh, they massive they're very wide uh, so I think these as a small class van is one of the biggest the transits I think they're slightly bigger but very, very little uh, at the beginning I was thinking about the Volkswagen T4 or even T5 but the size inside is, is huge difference and uh, they wide on the bottom they go narrow way on the top uh, which these are pretty much square so from there to there I had, I had a drop um, like a bed that used to drop down for my daughter and I used to fit there comfortably you know usually people put like a uh, plywood over the top here but then you lose all that that space that's behind it we don't want to do it we, we want to use like a more kind of like a military style I don't know military maybe not but just use as much space as we have available uh, however in that bed between that window and that window which is no windows but just space for the windows I can fit comfortably and I have that much space left over the top of my head okay I'm a shoulders I know that uh, I'm a meter and 76 uh, and I fit comfortably. So I guess a meter and eighty, which is pretty much normal average, uh, a, a person can fit. And uh, but then depends if if you don't have to if if you can sleep, you don't have to have your legs completely straight like me. I have to be lie down like a fish, like a dead fish, completely square flat. If not, I can't sleep. Uh, then you you be you be good, even if you tour. Uh, um, let's go behind. Oh, this is my heater, diesel heater, electronic. Uh, this and this is exactly another you know, thing that I've done. Probably in 15 minutes, you, you can see one hole there. The hole there was already there. A big jibberry clip. Just put it on. It is pretty safe. It was there uh, for months now. Does the job. Uh, exhaust. Uh, this gets pretty hot, so that's why I have to insulate it even more. Uh, this is a small. Uh, portable uh, drill just in case uh, jump leads a drill you see people saying why well, you carry a drill when you van beware because I'm an engineer I'm a mechanic I, I build stuff so every time we go out and something goes wrong everyone is just Thomas can you give me a hand Thomas this Thomas that Thomas that I wish they don't but then it's normal right I know how to fix stuff so I fix it and all the tools are actually uh, pretty good when you when you have them on board. Um, when we used to tow the trailer with the Jeep, uh, the Jeep the J with really same spec as this. And we used to tow a trailer. I used to sleep inside. I even used to tow a, a small a generator and a small welder and the angle grounder as well, just in case. Because you know when you're doing off road, you know, and travel and lots of bad stuff happens, and you're really far from anyone who can give you a hand I mean you can call a recovery truck but they won't get that far as you did so it's not always an option bead locks no bead locks you absolutely don't need bead locks yeah this is an expedition vehicle why the fuck you need a bead locks uh, I put them on because I like them because I like to have this opportunity to air them down a lot even like a half bar and then you don't struggle with sand or, or, or snow, stuff like this. And it's, it helps a lot. Uh, this is a small gate I've made for the spare tire and the spare jerry can. Actually, two jerry cans here. Uh, I had one here already strapped in because obviously I'm 
again time I didn't have the time to build a proper like a case or a shelf or whatever like a holders for two of them now it's removed because I can't even remember why we removed it uh, spotlights for the back and the sides because sometimes we're on the campsite and it's dark like white campsite and we got kids running around there and at night it's pitch black sometimes so I turn the lights of this and it's nice and light all around it just to keep an eye on them obviously they can see where they go because when you say tents up kids obviously don't see the wires behind the tent lamp, uh, tents and, uh, yeah so this is the back this is the back there you go this is my dodgy fuel tank uh, saying dodgy, it, it actually does the job, it doesn't leak, it's all pretty nice and set. This is just a fuel tank from the E46-330 diesel uh, from the Donald car when I took the engine out and to put in this one. So it's just, I just throw all this stuff inside, secure it, make a fuel system, fuel pumps and everything, nice and sealed. everything is overrated. Uh, so it is safe, but obviously you can understand this is not the way to do it, because it takes all that space and then you're there. All this stuff and stuff over there and my recovery gear should be underneath of the bed. Um, so yeah, this is uh, pump for the mattress, bolts, this is my gun, this is a gas gun, we used to just have fun when we, when we out. Um, yeah, it's never now. <laughs> Every time we forget. Every time we forget this, we have to have it. Uh, spray for bugs. This actually works very well. Uh, we have another one, specific one. Midgets. Uh, as soon as you go to Scotland, lots of midgets. Not even Scotland. Wales as well, and lots of midgets, and I hate them. Uh, waterproof. This is, I think, the jacket. No, this is waterproof pants, waterproof jacket. This is, I don't know why it's here, so off um, pillows uh, rope uh, towel uh, spare gas cans another towel we in UK so we get wet pretty much uh, all the time not all the time but quite often um, then I have obviously more towel this is for my missus when she cooks um, lighting lights this one is fairly good. This is this is one is. Let me show you this one. This one is nice because when you're camping, you can hang it on the top. You can just turn the light on and use just like a normal torch, or you can put it on the table for kids or inside the tent. And it lights up, and it stays for a long time. So small things like these, they're fairly cheap, and when you camp in the wild, this is actually really useful. Um, yeah barbecue lighting this is important too um, inverted small ones they only cheap by just like changing charging the phone or small things and I don't know I have two of them here uh, they're both pretty crap but an emergency for some reason this is another torch another lamp battery one and uh, it works pretty well yeah just put it down the table the battery is gonna go not much over here, still lots of stuff to put in, obviously. We're not ready yet for the big expeditions, but we don't do them at the moment because just this year is going to be massively busy. We just, we're planning to go to Scotland at least uh, once this year and hopefully this winter doing Norway. Norway in winter is just beautiful. Uh, what else can I show you? Well, that's it really, it's not, not, nothing much to it. Lots of stuff is inside the obviously engine bay, but that's technical stuff, axles and transmission and all that stuff. But it's not really that important at the moment. Give me a sec. Let me just put this on. Yeah, it's a bit pain in the ass. Close this because obviously it catches on the spare tire. 35. Not big deal, but. This on and voila. This is my side door, which opens on the top. 
Now the reason for that was because I liked it, I thought it was cool. And uh, the other reason is because when you slide them out, it will hit this tire because they stick out too much. So I was supposed to modify the hinges, the at up one, the bottom one, the mid one, and all the stuff. I just couldn't be hassled. And I said maybe if you, if you do this kind of door, it's actually going to be easier uh, to actually do it, which turned out yeah, very easy. It was a half day job, and it's all done. Plus, a good idea is I'm going to put a curtain all over this place, all around it, and a shower. Yeah, I'm going to install a shower here. And the beauty is because I got the Webasto here, Webasto is electronic, it's not the Webasto. Um, I'm gonna bring that pipe over here and inside the curtain for the shower. So even if it's nice and cold outside, you got a nice warm shower outside. Uh, I know maybe this is not the, 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 the true speed of wild camping, but the older you get, the more comfortable you wanna stay. I mean, if you have it, why don't use it? Yeah. I hate cold, so there you go. Uh, yeah, this is the trailer. I'm gonna finish for this van. Oh, well, really, I want to start doing trailers for customers, anyway. So I just, I don't know, for some reason, I just enjoy doing that. Nothing to do with the race cars or stuff like this. Yeah, this is what I used to do. This is what I do now. At the moment, turbo system, etc., etc. But I do enjoy coming back in the uh, off-road stuff. But before I used to do all the off-road competition, uh, buggies and cars and swapping the axles, transmissions, and just make them build them up, roll cages and all that stuff. Now, when I'm back into off-roading stuff, I'm really into this um, expedition overlanding stuff. I completely love it. Plus the cars, they have to be prepared much better than the ones that you just have fun with. So, all right. Let's see tomorrow. If I'm going tomorrow, I bring the camera with me, so I make uh, I make more videos. Yeah. I make more videos. Maybe we're gonna do Strada Strada Florida or Strada Florita, whatever they wanna call it. Uh, who's in UK into green laning? They know this is one of the one of the most famous uh, green lanes in UK. It's nothing challenging. But it's nice, it's nice views and you have to cross a couple of uh, small rivers and uh, there's a bomb hole. Again, not challenging, people are scared of it, but it's, it's very easy to do it because it's all out of, it made in like a massive rock and it's very grippy, so it's fairly easy. But it's scenic, it looks good. So I think we're gonna go there. Then we're probably gonna go to the bunkhouse, which we have rented out. The whole book as far as I think we're gonna be in, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 people, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's update to do tomorrow.